Hi everyone, uh, I have a game and in this one I have the white pieces. The last two game games uh, I, I played with the black and I lost both of them. I, I think, uh, well, I was definitely winning in the last one, but I managed to mess it up in time trouble. And the one before that I just got out to play, they grabbed material and I, and I was destroyed. I'm going to allow the Nimzo if he wants to go into that. I like Queen C2 lines. Uh, the, the, the games are often very interesting. And, and th I, I think I will stick to my Bishop G5 uh, aggressiveness. Uh, this is a move that I've played in my first Nimzo Indian game. Uh, first Nimzo Indian tournament game. Uh, and, and I did manage to beat a 2200 player. Uh, th this has been played about 500 times on master level, so it's not that rare, but it's it's way less common than the main lines. And often after h6, there are ideas of h4. Uh, yeah, but th this is a better move. Uh, d5 is the main line, and now I get to support my pawn. And the idea is uh, that before I castle, I always have the option to go h4. And after I castle, I will retreat my bishop. And the point is that I want to get both of my bishops pointing at the black's king. So sort of using black's lead in development to highlight that he'd already committed his king to one side of the board. But we will see. Ideally, of course, I would like to take on c4 in one move. So I don't want to play bishop d3 and then bishop takes c4. Uh, and on bishop d3, if d takes c4, I could take on h7. That's also an option. So bishop d3, he plays h6. I could play h4 there. Uh, now he wants to take on c4 and liberate his bishop. So I don't think I'm going to allow that. Uh, I want him to have a pawn on d5. So I think cd is correct. So this is just strategically to, to, to block the bishop. I think this is a good option. This sort of makes b6 uh, a waste of time because now his bishop is going to be developed to this diagonal. Yeah, let me, let me just check the video. Uh, everything should be okay, I hope. I did clean my laptop again uh, and I'm currently in the process of uh, fixing Lucia's old desktop and also uh, I'm trying to get my own new desktop computer. So that's my financial goal. But after I've cleaned my laptop again, the, the fans seem uh, a bit more silent. I don't know. I, I cleaned it like a month ago and then again yesterday. So I really don't think I made any an, an impactful I don't know why he isn't recapturing this is worrying maybe he wants to take on c3 and then take on d5 with the queen but that doesn't make too much sense he has to take with the pawn I'm going to have an isolated queen's pawn Either way, after he plays c5, so I don't think he should experiment here. Yeah, okay, he takes. Now, if I play knight f3 and he plays bishop g4. I have knight e5, so I think knight f3 is a very normal move, very standard. He doesn't have bishop f5 yet. If he plays h6, I think I will play h4. Again, I don't want to commit my light squared bishop too early, uh, because after bishop d3, h6, h4, I'm not threatening mate if hg5, hg5, uh, knight e8, for example. It's still scary after bishop h7, bishop g8, but maybe he can get away with it. 
So I'm waiting to see whether he plays h6, <clears throat> which I don't think is a good move, but... It's a very thematic attack after h6, h4. And I, before that, wow, he plays bishop b7. So that means he wants to play c5. Uh, and I'm not going to be taking that. So that means the e file is going to open up. Uh, so bishop d3, c5, bishop d3, h6, bishop h4, c5, castles, king side. Can I go h4 anyway? Bishop d3, h6, h4, c5, castles, queen side seems very scary. So I think I'm going to play without h4 because now his bishop is not a good piece. So I'll just play bishop d3 and on h6 I'm going bishop h4. And on c5 I'm just castling king side. I need to get my king away from the e file. I'm not afraid of c4, of course, just bishop e2 and then I have e4 later on. Maybe I could have played h4, but I didn't want to risk it because I'm definitely not castling king side, queen side now, that he has uh, an inferior piece. And if he plays c5, c takes d, e takes d, I can play rook e1, rook e3, knight e5, and rook g3, which is a very thematic attacking idea in IQP positions. For the moment, while well, I'm sort of talking about what's going to happen in the future, but I'm pretty certain this is going to be an IQP position, because if he doesn't play c5, for example, if he plays knight c6 here, then he's definitely worse, because his bishop is never going to develop. Okay, c5, yeah. Uh, castles, c, d, e, d. So it's happening. So I want to keep his bishop bad. I want to have a, a healthy IQP uh, where I'm controlling e4 and he isn't controlling e5. And of course, my bishop is on h4. It's not on b2. So his d5 pawn is way more of a hindrance than my d4 pawn. Especially since he it doesn't really support knight e4. Yeah, now he decides to trade, so he's wasted the tempo. And I'm not going to take developing his knight, of course. Unless I have something tactical with bishop takes and queen a4, but I don't think I do. No, no, I don't. So I'm just playing rook e1. Rook e1 should be correct. Uh, where do I want my rooks? Cd or ec? I think rook fe1 is correct. I think eventually he's going to take on d4. taking this again c4 really isn't a good idea wow this is strange okay I'm actually not sure b takes should definitely be correct because I'm playing for e4 but Queen takes seems very tempting. No, 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 b takes, so that he doesn't have knight c6, knight b4. Definitely b takes. My center is very strong now. Uh, and of course, if he ever takes on d4 now, I, he just has an isolated queen spawn for nothing. 
I can challenge the e4 square with knight d2. That being said, once he plays knight c6, I don't really have a good square for my knight. But I should be able to play knight e5 immediately because he cannot take. Yeah, now he is trying to prevent uh, knight e5 and he also wants to play knight e4. Uh, he wants to play knight e4 and prevent e4. <clears throat> so I may play bishop g3 here, just to chase the queen away. Because my bishop really isn't useful on g3 anymore. But then knight e4 comes with tempo on the bishop. I'm also tempted to sack the exchange with e4, but that's a bit too much, I think. Okay, I need logical moves. How can I improve my position? a4 is a good move. c4 seems like a good move. Uh, d takes c and c4 also seems like a good move, because if he takes with the queen, I take on f6. So dc, bc, c4. dc, bc, c4. That sort of uses his lack of development. So d takes c5, b takes c5, c4. He cannot take, he cannot push. Okay, I'm doing that. That seems good. I need to weaken the the e4 square. Because now, for example, if he plays rook e8, I can take on f6. If he takes, I win the queen. If he does nothing, I can take. Or I can take on f6 first. If he pushes, I win a, I win a pawn. So I think this was... This was correct. I have a lead in development. His rooks are not connected. Still hasn't played knight d7 and cannot play knight d7, I think, because if knight bd7, cd5, knight b6, uh, okay, that's sensible. Uh, so I'm just taking on f6, I think. Takes on f6, he takes on c4. I play queen c3, he plays queen f6, uh, I play queen f6, gf6, rook c1 should be okay, so I'm taking on f6. If he takes with the queen, I'm taking cd. So queen f6, queen f6, gf6, rook c1, gf6, rook c1. Should be able to get my pawn back with compensation. Which rook, which rook? I'm not sure which rook. Uh, I don't want to be running into knight d3. So he can go knight c6, knight e5, knight d3. So I'm thinking the e rook. Because I don't really think the e file is going to be where action happens. Oh, he plays knight d7, okay. Now I have knight h4, knight f5 ideas. He wants to play knight b6, chasing my knight away, so I think I need to attack the c pawn again to make sure knight b6 loses a pawn. And after rook d8, I need to give my king some luft to make sure I can take the pawn after the knight moves. And my next idea is after let's say g3 or h3 is to go knight h4 knight f5 pressure here pressure here pressure here if i can get my knight to f5 i should be strategically much better if not winning i think i think because of my very superior pawn structure i may already be winning because i don't see how he includes his other rook into play yeah, okay, he, he plays this so that I cannot take the pawn, but I'm going to play h3 to make sure I have some luft. 
So now again the knight cannot move. And my knight is controlling the d2 square, so he has no infiltration. But once I move my knight, he could be able to play rook d2. But then takes, 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 takes. Uh, rook d2, rook a5. Okay, this should be under complete control. I don't see how he can survive this. I know it's equal material, but it's... I think unlikely he can defend. I need two moves to to win this position. Knight h4, knight f5. If my knight was on f5 now, it would already be over. Because on king h7, I have knight d6 winning the f7 pool. Also, I shouldn't forget I have knight d4 ideas because he cannot take. Do I want double pawns or do I want to undouble his pawns? What's stronger? So knight e5, fe5, rook c5. Rook c5, rook c5, rook d2, rook e5, rook a2, or rook d2, rook a5, seems stronger. And if I play rook c5, rook c5, rook c5, knight f3, g f3, rook d2, yeah, I'm going to undouble his pawns because it gives me another target. I think that's better. I don't want double pawns myself. Okay, so knight takes, rook takes. Here, here. I think I want to trade these two to give myself a passed pawn, although I'm not sure. I was thinking rook a5. Rook a5, rook f2. Uh, rook a7, rook e2. Rook a3. f5, king g3. e4. I think I want a passed pawn. Yeah, I want the best pawn on the A-file. I know my rook is behind the pawn, so or, or my rook is in front of the pawn, so it should technically be a draw. But if I can get my rook to the side, somehow, so th this I have to defend. He should play E4. Well, he should play e4 at some point. He doesn't have to do it now, but as soon as I try to do this, he needs to play e4. Okay, he should have played f5, I think. Uh, yeah, but that would have allowed me to cut his king off. So I'm not sure. So let's have a look at this. King g3, e4, king f4, rook g2, king e4, rook g3, winning my h pawn. I think I have to go from the other side <coughs> to king g1 and get his rook out of the way that way. So king g1, not king g3. Because on king g3 he has e4. I have a lot of time, I'm playing too quickly. I'm going to try to use my time more wisely now. Now I can start moving my pawn, <coughs> but I don't want his rook to get behind it. Uh, 
Can I go e4 here? e4, rook d4, rook e3. My idea is to go e4 to give my rook some more scope. And to make sure he doesn't play e4, because if he plays e4, then he'll have rook d3 ideas. The main thing is that I'm defending against rook d4. I have rook e3 against rook d4, and then I can get my rook to the side of my best pawn, and that should be fine. So he doesn't have rook d4. If he plays king uh, g5, threatening king f4, then I can go g3, so e4, king g5, g3, rook h2, h4, king g4, hmm. I'm not sure I like e4. But if I don't play e4, he's playing f5. I think I'm going for e4. I like e4 now. I'm expecting king g5. And I'm going to go g3, trying to restrict him. And with my pawns on g3 and h4, so for example, king g5, g3, rook h2, h4 check, king g4, rook, uh, king g1, rook e2, he has rook e2. Ah, he has rook e2. But on king g5, I can go rook a7. King g5, rook a7, f6, g3, rook h2, a4. Okay. Do I play rook a7, allowing rook d4, or do I go with g3? I think I'm playing g3. And 
and on rook h2 I may actually play king g1 but then he has rook e2 which I don't want to allow I actually don't have to waste the tempo on, on king g1 I can simply play rook a7, f6, a4, rook h3, king g2 he has to play rook h5 his rook is kind of trapped So I think that would be a favorable pawn trade for me. Or pawn sacrifice. If I could get his rook to h5. Yeah, okay, that's probably much better. But now I can get in with tempo. So ef5, king f5, rook f3. Check, king e4, rook f2 seems interesting so i'm doing that this way i can defend my pawn from the side If I'm in front of my if I'm in front of my pawn then I can never queen it. So I need to if I'm behind this position is winning. If I'm on the side nobody knows. But if I'm in front then it's definitely a draw. King g2 seems forced. Do I improve my king with rook e2, king d4, rook f2? That way I'm blocking the pawn and I'm one sw square closer, but I give him e4, rook f3 check. Uh, I also like rook b2 to make sure he can never play his king to the third rank. Oh, I like that. That way I'm playing for rook b3. I just need to make sure that the opponent game isn't losing. So rook b2, let's say... Let's say h5. I play rook b4 check, king e3. Or sorry, king d3. Rook b3 check, rook b3, a b3, e4, king f1. Ooh. That's losing. The pawn endgame is losing for me. I cannot do that. So, I should just get the best pawn on the king side, I think. Of course, he can never cross to the third rank while his rook is on a3 anyway. Because on king d3 I have rook f3 check. So he will have to play king d4. Okay, so I, I'm just gonna make a best pawn. has to play king d4, now he wants to play e4, e3, against which I'm playing rook e2 and king f3 if I can. Okay, I'll continue making the best pawn. <coughs> I 
I think this is fine. So if he plays e4, uh, or once he plays e3, I'm playing rook e2, and he plays king d3, I'm playing king f3. That's my plan. Unless he plays king d3 first, then I have to play king f1. Okay. Did I just blunder my pawn? I just blundered my pawn. My god. Yeah, I just blundered my pawn away. I can actually play king g3, rook g5, king f4, and he has e3. King g3. Ah, why? Why didn't I think about this? I just lost my pawn. So king g3. Yeah, I think I have to play king g3. Ah. I didn't think about losing this pawn. This was a bad end game. Yeah, maybe I should have played g3 instead of h3, that way I wouldn't have lost the pawn. h3 was stupid. Because on rook d2, uh, on a rook check I had king g2 defending my f2 pawn. My plan was to go on e3, rook e2, rook e5, and just push my a pawn. But maybe it doesn't work. Why did I blunder my g pawn like that? I just didn't consider that he can go back and attack the pawn. this I mean I hope it's going to be a draw if anybody's playing for a win it's him now so now I need to chase this king away and then play rook e2 and now it's a draw unless he plays king d3 where I cannot take the pawn because he has this check so I need to play rook e1 wait or I can do this first. Now I'm trying to win, but it's a draw because I have an H pawn. So I don't think I'll force the issue too much. King d3 was a tricky move because if I take I lose, but it's still a draw so it's probably the best attempt.
Okay. Oh, is there any hope here? I don't think so. I'll just offer a draw. I mean, there's no point in playing this one. It would be fun if he declined. He's not accepting my draw? Okay. Yeah, okay, he accepts. Uh, so, uh, what I wanted to talk about is instead of h3 here, if I play g3, then the same variation doesn't work. So if we have a look at this, I'm defending my f2 pawn, I can safely play here. After h3, yeah, let's just see if I had something stronger in the opening. Uh, yeah, so b6 is weird and cd5 is correct. Uh, bishop d3, everything is fine, bishop h4, castles. Wow, bishop a6 loses. Wow. How? I still don't get it. Oh, I just win the d5 pawn. Oh, I just win the d5 pawn. Okay, so this is the variation. So takes, 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 queen takes, and knight takes. Yeah, but what if g takes? Yeah, then I just get my knight to f5. Why queen e4? Why queen e4? I attack the rook, I attack the rook. Oh, I'm very slow today. This is bad. Yeah, this is very bad. I just missed a lot of things this game. Yeah, apparently I chose the worst option. So if I go king g3, he takes on a2, I take on e5. Let's say he starts pushing his pawns. Yeah, this is hopeless. He has a best pawn and this is hopeless. <sighs> okay, uh, I'm sorry about this game. It wasn't a good game. Uh, it was a draw and it should have been a win. I'm not going to be accept, upset like yesterday, but still, this 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 wasn't good. Congratulations to my opponent for fighting in a much worse position, I think. Uh, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more chess. Tomorrow we are continuing with theory. Bye-bye.